Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with Charleston Reiki and Taro and our good friend, Dr. Laura Griffith Garland, who's joining us here today. And always exciting to know that she's going to pull a card before we start to tell us the topic of the day. But she's here uh, in so many different ways uh, to help us. So I'll have you introduce yourself because it gets confusing when you start talking about being a physicist and all like she's a brain and she's intuitive. <laughs> right? I love it. I I do. I I, I uh... I used to work as a nu- as a nuclear physics instructor for the Navy. I did that for a long time, uh, and uh, have taught uh, many different varieties of math and science over the years. And uh, but at the same time, I started reading tarot cards, and then I decided to do more and was a shaman, am a shaman, and uh, do life coaching. So, yeah, lots of stuff. Um, we make sure that. Um, what I talk about, while it may sound really woo-woo, a lot of it does really have a basis in, or at least we're starting to get an idea in the science of what's going on with how we do the things that we do that are kind of woo-woo. Ooh, that's a little rhymy. Oh, well. I like it. Woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> so um, today, today's card, um, I pulled a card and it was called fear. And I'm like, oh, that's a broad topic. What the heck am I supposed to talk about with this? Luckily, I always pull two more cards to figure out what the heck and narrow it down. Um, And um, I got suppression and balance. Um, It was all about emotion. So emotion really high uh, for a lot of people recently. And it just doesn't, we don't seem to be able to take that down uh, a notch. Um, And looking at this, it was... um, I realized that that the fear is actually about the motivation for our decisions. That's what they want me to talk about today. Uh, Because our our, our decisions uh, come from two places, really, there are two places, there's fear and there's love. Um, And we have shades of that, but but Mm -hmm. when you get down to the the depth, the very underlying, that's our our two places. Um, And unfortunately, we've been fed a very steady diet of fear, 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 fear. Um, When I was a kid, it was fear of the Soviet Union and nuclear war. I I, I mean, when I was a kid, because of where I grew up, I didn't have to worry about hurricanes or tornadoes. Um, We had ice and snowstorms. Uh, But the, the drills we did were air raid drills. We didn't do tornado drills. We did air raid drills when I was a kid. And, you know, that was that was pretty terrifying, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, now, now it's just become fear of everyone and everything that doesn't look, act, or think exactly like you do. Um, it's gotten to the point that the anxiety levels and um particularly in the United States, every time they, they run this test, the anxiety levels just keep going up. Um, it's, we're, we're not going down. We, we've got the anxiety levels just, just keep going up. And, and that's just not really, really awesome. <laughs> I mean, we do have most of three generations that were raised uh, without the threat of nuclear war. Um, that would be the younger millennials, all of Gen Z, and all of Gen Alpha. They, they never had that. But now <clears throat> we seem to have that back slightly again. Um, and then we've got most of five generations of women that had sovereignty over their own bodies. And that's the, you know, most of the baby boomers, all of Gen X, uh, millennials, Gen Z, and the oldest part of, of Gen Alpha. Uh, but with what's been leaked, that may not be the case in half the country soon. So, so there's whole waves of fear just rolling out there right now. And, but that's, that's not what we want to base our decisions on. Basing a decision on fear actually often ends up at the very least, it restricts you. Mm-hmm. 
at the very least, you restricted yourself into a tiny box. Um, but otherwise, it can really hurt things. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so well, we don't, we don't want to do that. But we don't want to always come from the space of fear. Um, and the question is, how do we shift that? And, and why does it just keep kind of coming up no matter what we're doing? So fear actually can engender a whole bunch of other emotions. And so the basis is actually fear, but it comes across as anger um, or hate or jealousy, um, extreme sadness, loneliness. All of these tend to be based out of fear. It's they're a type of come from. Um, so when we're feeling those, we don't think clearly. Um, and if it's anger or even all the way to rage or hatred or something like that, especially as women, we are taught not to show that. You, you're, not, you're not supposed to be an angry woman. Um, a lot of guys do that too, but, but um, women, that, that's an unex, unacceptable emotion in a lot of places. Um, but sadness is also an unacceptable emotion in a lot of places. Loneliness, expressing that unacceptable emotion. Um, you put on your happy face and go forward. Um, and so this is where the suppressing comes in. We suppress these emotions because they're socially not acceptable. You go on your Facebook or your TikTok or your Instagram or whatever your favorite thing is. And, you know, you see all these perfect lives. And if your life isn't perfect and you display something that isn't perfect, then the trolls go bananas. Crazy. They go absolutely bananas if you don't display a perfect life. Mm -hmm. um, exactly <laughs> and and so and so we're suppressing the emotions not acknowledging the basis of the emotion which is some sort of fear in a lot of cases and when you suppress it first off you end up playing whack-a-mole because it comes up somewhere whack-a-mole <laughs> yeah um i don't know that they have that game anymore but it was kind of funny i oh um, i see oh but they have it we just sit it at um once it took me it's a great wolf lodge hey the whack-a-mole the yeah, big yeah, thing yeah, yeah. yep yep um fun is a game not so fun when it's your emotions mm -hmm. um so um the, and when you suppress the emotion it is still there it's subconsciously driving what's going on in our head yeah so, and, and it's much more insidious then when it, <laughs> when it goes subconscious, it becomes insidious because a conscious emotion, you can be like, oh, I'm feeling this. And so now I've said something dumb or uh, now I'm, I'm hiding in the corner or, um, I've run away <laughs> or I'm attacking or whatever the freaking heck yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. You at least are like, I'm having this emotion and now I'm doing this. But when it's subconscious, it, it, it goes into hiding and will behave and feel and think in patterns that are usually painful in some way. They end up being some way painful. And we don't even know why. We're like, I, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, for example, you're badly hurt in two successive relationships in college. And now you have a fear of being in any committed relationship. But you say, oh no, I'm good. I got over John mm -hmm. and Andre. Or I got over Sarah and Rosa. Yeah, right. <laughs> ages ago. Mm -hmm. Ages ago. This doesn't affect me. I'm great. But it does. You've suppressed it. How do I know? Because you'll do one of two things. Either you're going to find people, date them, and then when it starts to get a little serious, there's something wrong with them. They were perfect. You were telling your girlfriends or guy friends how perfect they were up until last Saturday. And something was mentioned about getting a little more serious. And suddenly, nope, there's something terrible. And you find a way either to dump them or them make them dump you. Or, 
Or then there's the other one who they only go out and do like totally superficial hookups. Saying, oh, I want a relationship, I'm lonely. But they specifically only go and do superficial hookups. So that varied pattern of I'm afraid of getting hurt is running their whole relationship dynamic. And they're like, I, I, I don't know why I keep choosing these. I don't know why I keep choosing these guys or gals who, who just end up being not good enough. It's not about that. It's, yeah. it's about that suppressed fear that you got to bring out. Another example. Um, let's say you're normally a fairly easygoing person. But oh boy, when someone pushes particular buttons, you go sky high in an instant. And people know this, but you don't really recognize it, maybe. Or maybe you do. You're like, I have no idea why I just suddenly get so upset. And that's some seriously suppressed emotions. Under yeah. This. Is it anger? Or maybe it's all the way to rage. I don't know. Um, but, you know, this is just a possible scenario. Let's say you had a subtly controlling and manip manipulative parent, but they were very covert about it. You know, they were always telling you they were doing stuff for your own good and, and, and helping you. It was all about helping you. Um, and they always told you they loved you. Yeah. Now you're supposed to love them, right? Cause and that's... they love you. They tell you they do all the time. And maybe even as an adult, they're still yeah. subtly manipulating everything. Now, whenever someone who is not that parent does something even like that, and... boom, you're gone. You're over the top. Mm -hmm. Suppressed anger. It's suppressed anger. And maybe, and probably the original fear that was that was the basis of that is actually this fear of you're not good enough because Ugh, all always that subtle manipulation is telling you oh I love you but nothing you've ever done is good enough because I'm going to manipulate this I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do exactly you know so there's this this fear of not being good enough that's hiding underneath there and you are good enough you really are but how do you get out of this Sometimes you might need a counselor. Um, um, if you, if it's rage hiding underneath there and, and it's becoming a, an, a, a serious problem and, or where you're getting close to getting into trouble with things like this, you, you might need a counselor for that level of, of, of emotion. But a lot of times you don't need a counselor. You just need someone to help you see the pattern what yeah. the triggers are, um, how you're emotionally attaching to things, what your thinking pattern is, how that's pre presenting in your behavior, and just someone to help you look at that and 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 see what's going on. And that's what that's what coaches are trained to do. What yeah. like I, I'm trained to help you see that pattern and be like, okay, let's 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 step back and look at this. Yeah. And, and it's about a mindset shift because at some point it is a pattern that's almost, it, it's like, like a habit in a way. Um, and, and it's a mindset of this fear that hides under there that has to be brought out and, and, and shifted. And so really getting cognizant of the emotion that's underneath there is the first step. Yeah. The first step is figuring out what that emotion is and then being able to go back and see what's underlying that emotion. So what what's what's back there? What's hiding? <laughs> Let's lift the Let's lift the lid on your subconscious and, and see what's in there. Let's sure. take a little peek and 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 get a, a an idea of what's really 
the trigger? What was that original thing way back that started this patterning? Mm -hmm. And once you can, can, can get really cognizant of that emotion, then you can ask yourself, well, what, what's causing that? And I got to say, if your answer is, well, this person did blank or something happened blank that made me, it made me, oh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, (laughs) Um, oh, I've said that. I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, but but it's not actually true, is it? No one actually <laughs> went into my brain and actually made my my neurons fire in a certain way and made me interpret those in a in, as an emotion and made the certain chemicals in my brain do a certain thing and and run through my body and maybe produce some adrenaline or, or other emo- chemicals. And, you know, no one, no, no, actually, no one actually went in there and did that. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, so, so we have to go, oh, crud. <laughs> crud. <laughs> well, I uh, did that. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Um, and, and, and that's, when we take ownership of it, of it, it's not easy. It's, it's not fun sometimes to take ownership of that emotion. Um, and, and, you know, there was some sort of pattern, something that happened that originally created this. Yes. But again, if we go back to the relationship example, yeah, two people, two people dumped you badly. Yeah. Um, but again, they didn't go in your head and and make the meaning out of that. Your brain made the meaning out of that. Your brain then said, oh, I'm not, oh, wait, it comes back to, I'm not good enough. Oh, that's always (laughs) the fear of I'm not good enough, which then makes fear of committed relationships. But you're the one who made the meaning of that, not, not whoever it was who was equally young and stupid and, and mean and whatever, and having a bad day themselves or having manipulative parents or having <laughs> who knows what was going on in their life. True. Um, and so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's just, it's a mind shift. mindset shift. That's hard to say. Mindset shift. Yeah, don't, don't, don't mix that up. You'll say Got it. a bad word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Almost <You know>. did. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, so so we, we, we figure out kind of the basis of what that is underneath there <sighs> and take ownership of how we created that. Mm -hmm. And then that brings it to the conscious. Then it's conscious. Once we can get it conscious, then we can deal with it. When it's hiding underneath the hood of the the subconscious. Yeah. um, It's really hard to deal with. But once we get it conscious, we can then start to really work on it. Because then we can, anytime that trigger happens, we can then be like, oh, it's this. Okay. Uh Yeah, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start to shift this. And on top of that, we can start to avoid places, things, situations that might trigger. Like we can learn to be like, oh, wait, we're heading into one of those. Let's alter the conversation let's alter what we're doing let's let's go for a walk let's go get some exercise let's do something so we don't end up wherever the heck that that is 
So we start to shift the patterning. We start to shift allowing ourselves to set up the triggers. We start to shift that. We start to shift when we're in an emotion like that, we start to be able to get off to the side a little bit and go, oh, wait, no, 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 oh, wait. no. I, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. How do I stop? And a lot of times you, you need to actually let the emotion ride for just a little bit. The, you need to feel it and let it ride for just a little bit because emotional intensity, if you actually feel it, can peak in like 90 seconds. If you let it ride for just about that amount of time, you can let it peak and then you can get enough to be like, okay, let's, let's just move this away. And as a coach, I can show you ways to do this, to get the pattern into shift, to understand what the patterning is, to understand how you set up situations to trigger yourself, um, how, how other people around you behave and how you can steer things so that you don't go that direction. And, and this is this, because as a coach, I want you to have a wonderful life. I want you to not make decisions based on fear and suppressed emotions hiding in there. I want you to make decisions based on some form of love. Yeah. Some form of love because that that's just so much happier, nicer the anxiety level goes down. Oh, hey, your blood pressure might go down too a lot. <laughs> Definitely a lot healthier. Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe it's your stomach issues that'll go away. How many people who have IBS out there have been told by their doctor that it's some sort of stress and something going on in your head? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, by cleaning the, some of this stuff up, letting it go, we end up creating that better life that, that we all really want to have. Um, very few of us really want to have a crappy life. <laughs> there might be some people out there who want to have a crappy life. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was their contract this lifetime. But, um, but I think the rest of us want, want to have a much better life. And we want to make clear decisions. We want to feel clear. We want to feel open and happy and and not afraid of everything and everyone around us and everything and everything that's everyone that's going on in the world uh, we want to feel that um, yeah and that's that's you know part of what coaching is sometimes you need a counselor to do this because it's really severe yeah you don't have to go that hot that to that level and um just want you to be happier healthier and think about what suppressed emotions are hiding under there, what patterns you got going on, and um, start to clear this up, be happier. Oh my gosh, absolutely, because we all want to be happier and live our best life. And the type of people you're working with now, they're on that journey, they're on that path, and I'm sure you have plenty of clients that thank you, right, for the work you've done. Could you share yeah. a story or two from one of them? Um, actually both of the stories that I gave as examples were from clients that I'm currently working with, with patterns of shifting with the, the, the college two um, <laughs> the, the two boyfriends <laughs> who were really mean. And I have a, a male client whose mom was, is, she's a covert narcissist. It, it is what my husband tells me the definition is. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and um, both of them have really shifted patterns so that um, uh, the, the gal um, just uh, two weeks ago um, it got engaged. <laughs> um, and oh. um, the, the, the gentleman with the, the covert narcissist mom has started to make some peace with that and um, not get into some really weird situations that he was having with his wife. Uh, because you know, it's a little, little triggers were, were causing some, some severe issues. And so he and his wife are in a much better place and they didn't have to go to couples counseling. So, so it's, it's, they're both really happy at the moment. Wow, that's great to hear, that's great news. Yep, love it. We love it. We just love it when the lights come on and, and 
and the glow comes into people. So got it. Wow. And we still have a few minutes left. Uh, Dr. Laura uh, Griffith Garland is here with us. Uh, Charleston Tar uh, Tarot and Reiki. Dot com. What else did you want to leave us with today? Um, for the situation um, in Ukraine, mm. that's all fear-based. Everything that went down with creating that ha is fear-based, and that that that's that's one of the reasons this fear came up today. I'm sure, um, and so if people can shift to more decisions coming from love and sending that sort of energy to that region. Maybe we can keep things from escalating some, and that would just be really, really lovely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So if someone wants to work with you, reach out to you for uh, any of your expertise, um, <laughs> right? Because you offer a lot of different services. Uh, tell us where we could do that. Sure. Um, you can email at drlaura.coach. That's D-R-L-A-U-R-A dot C-O-A-C-H at gmail.com. Or you can phone at 843-259-8349. Um, I do have to say, that I am um, on vacation, vacation visiting my dad this week. So that phone, you can leave a message and I will get back to you next week when we're back in the office. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for being here, for joining us and uh, looking forward to the next time we connect. Have all a right. great day and to all of our listeners the same. We appreciate you. Are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the MyTuner Radio and online Radio Box apps for iOS, Android, and the Amazon App Store. Or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on OnlineRadioBox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.